family, how are we doing this morning? Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Praise the Lord. I got a thumbs up from Kyle. Man, thank you. That's awesome. I'm glad you got a good week. Praise the Lord. Well, hey, I just want to say uh, thank you and just take a moment to honor all of our veterans here in this place this morning. Happy Veterans Day. Would you guys give a round of applause for all the men and women who have served this country? We well, thank you. Praise the Lord. Well, if you don't know uh, my name, my name is Pastor Zach, and I'm the youth pastor here at The Crossing, and uh, occasionally from time to time I get to help out with the worship as well, and it is a privilege and an honor to be here before you this morning, and I'm excited to be bringing the Word of God to you. Um, so a little bit about me, I know that this might be the wrong time of the year to talk about this particular topic because of the weather pattern that we just had this past week um, with all the snow. And if, if you know me and you know me really well, you know my favorite thing to do in all the universe besides worship the Lord is snow blow. I just love to run a snowblower. I don't know why. It's just incredible. But one thing that I know that Alaskans really love to do is go camping. Raise your hand if you love to go camping. You guys thinking about that now, huh? You want to go camping. Maybe not this time of year. But uh, I didn't do a whole lot of camping growing up. Um, I did some minor camping trips with, you know, the cousins and stuff like that. Um, but I don't have a whole lot of skills when it comes to doing things like outdoor survival skills and, and stuff like that. I, I'm not very skilled in that manner. But uh, when my wife and I, Hadley, and I first got married, uh, we thought it would, I thought it would be a good idea, a fun idea to go camping together. And, uh, and since it was my idea, I went forth with the planning. I planned every detail that I could possibly think of. I, you know, prepared or I planned out all the meals that we were going to be eating. I uh, got a tent that we were going to borrow because we didn't own any gear, you know. And uh, I got the sleeping bags. I even got us an air mattress because I was like, man, we're going to glamp if we're going to do this, right? And uh, anyway, so I, I prepared every detail. I got everything. I even brought my 12-gauge shotgun because I was the man of the house or the tent, so to speak, and I was going to protect my wife, right? And we were going to go out on this amazing camping expedition, and we went all the way to Nancy Lake Campgrounds and set up a tent there, right? And that was our camping adventure, um, which I think is right for the level of skill that I have. Um, so we show up and we're, we're, we set up our tent, we, we set up the campgrounds and I prepare the most amazing camp food I have ever tasted and it was good and the night was going great. And uh, well, about halfway through dinner, it started to rain. And uh, because I was the one that planned every detail of this, pla uh, this camping trip, I didn't uh, pack anything for rain. No rain gear, no nothing, right? I didn't know that Literally, every time you go camping in Alaska, it's going to rain. Like, it doesn't matter. It's sunny skies. It's going to rain if you're camping in Alaska. And uh, so I didn't plan for rain. And uh, so we went down the street to the Three Bears and got um, those ponchos, you know, the kind of plastic that's so cheap that will rip if the air touches it wrong. Yeah, we got those big old ponchos. Not helping the case at all. So, you know, it's like 11 o'clock maybe, and we're like, this, this is terrible. Let's go inside the tent. Maybe we'll stay dry and warm in there. We're wrestling through this, and we finally fall asleep. Well, around 2 a.m., I wake up with water dripping on my forehead, and I have had it. I aggressively wake up Hadley. I said, we're out of here. I'm done camping. We're going home. And I kid you not, we left that campsite, and we left everything at that campsite, the tent and everything. And we left from Nance Lake and drove all the way to our apartment in Eagle River at 2 a.m., and I took a warm shower, and I stayed in my warm uh, apartment and all of that, and then later I had to return to go get all that stuff. But, uh, you know, I say all this not to say this. I'm not saying that I don't like camping. Uh, hear me out. I don't want to lose you at the beginning of this. I'm not saying I don't like camping. I'm just saying I have yet to learn an enjoyable way to camp. So if you think that you want to take me camping and show me a good time, come talk to me after service, and uh, maybe we'll make some plans this summer. I would love to go. Uh, I'm willing to take risks and adventures. But uh, I say all that to say that today we're going to be talking about somebody in Scripture who also set up their camp, who also set up their tent in the wrong place and in the wrong time. We are making our way through the, the book of Genesis um, 
together as a church. And so far, we have covered a ton of grounds. We've talked about the creation of the heavens and the earth, the fall of man, Cain and Abel. We've talked about all the generations leading up to Noah, and then the flood that followed, the Tower of Babel. And now we are making our way through Abraham's life. And, uh, So we're going to go ahead and dive into that this morning. But before we open up, I would like for you to grab your sword, grab your Bible, your phone, whatever it is you're getting the word from this morning, and say this statement with me this morning. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. In this book are the keys to an abundant life, a joy-filled life, and eternal life. I will take God at his word. Amen. Well, we can go ahead and turn to... Chapter 13 in the book of Genesis. And Pastor Brad did bring us through the 18th chapter last week, but I feel like we need to go back to 13 a little bit just to get some context about what we're going to be talking about this morning. And right in the beginning of chapter 13, it starts to tell about all the ways that the Lord had blessed Abraham. It said that he became very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. Abram was absolutely blessed. He had it made, right? And we get to meet a relative of Abram starting in verse 5. It says, Now Lot, who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. But the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. Now, can you imagine that with me for a minute? That the blessings upon Abram and Lot were so great. The blessings of the Lord was upon them so great. Their livestock, their herds were so huge that the land could not support them. Can you imagine how many cows that must have been? That, that must have been a lot of cows and how big their family gatherings and get-togethers must have been, that the land could not support them. I can't really imagine that. That's, that's, that's a lot. That, that's a huge amount of, of livestock and, and blessing from the Lord. But what I do know is that it, they didn't need anything. There was nothing that they, they had more than they could need. They had more than they could ever want. But because the land couldn't support them, their herdsmen began to fight and argue over where they were going to feed their livestock. So there was disagreement among their people. So Abraham said to Lot in verse 8, he said, Let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your herdsmen and mine, for we are brothers. Is not the whole land before you? That's a key question there. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. And if you go to the right, I'll go to the left. So Abraham gives Lot the choice. He said, you choose. You can go whichever way you want. The choice is yours. If you want to go to the right, then I'll go to the left. And if you want to go to the left, then then I'll go to the right. The choice was entirely up to Lot. So where did he choose to set up his camp? In verse 11 it says, So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company. Abraham lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tent near Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. So a question that I want us to ask ourselves this morning is where are you setting up your camp? Where are you setting up your camp? Now as believers, as children of God, man, I just got to declare this and I know that you guys are going to agree with me that we are absolutely blessed by the grace of God, amen? Amen. Right? We were, we were born in debt to our sin, and Jesus paid the price for our freedom, and he offers it to us by grace. That is a blessing. Amen? 
And in Philippians 4.19 it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And in Psalms 50 it says that he owns the cattle on the thousand hills for the world is his and all that is in it. And in Psalms 23 it says that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We are blessed as the children of God. We are living in the blessings of Abraham. We are blessed as the children of God, blessed by grace. So where are we setting up camp? Is not the land before you? Is not all the land before you? You see, there's a life of promise. There's a life of provision and a life of freedom in Christ. But there's also the devil's wicked and perverse version of that life. Where are you setting up camp? Where are we setting up camp with the music that we're listening to? Where are we setting up camp with the books that we're reading, with the, with the movies and the TV shows that we're being entertained by? Where are we setting up camp with, with the music, the book, and the TV shows that we're allowing our children to be exposed to? Because those things are influencing us, whether they're good or bad. Where are we setting up camp when we're home alone and behind closed doors, when it's late at night and you're the only one awake? Where are we setting up camp? Are we pitching our tent near Sodom or are we dwelling in the land of Canaan? It's important that we be on the lookout for the evil. It's important. You don't have to try very hard. You don't have to look very far to see the wickedness that surrounds us. Where are we setting up camp? So we skip forward to chapter 18. And Abraham's been in the land of Canaan for some time. And, and Lot's been near Sodom for some time. And, you know, we, uh, we see in the beginning of chapter 18 that three visitors stop by Abraham's place. And over the course of a meal that was prepared for these three visitors, they prophesied over Abraham and Sarah and said that they would have a wife. Or, I'm sorry, that they would have a son within the next year. And on the way out, the Lord said, in verse 20, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin is so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. And now I want you guys to look at what Abraham does in these next few verses because I think there's something absolutely essential that we need to pull out of these next few verses, something that we need to observe and to begin to practice as children of God. Starting in verse 22, it says, the men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Can you imagine standing before the Lord? Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city because of five people? You can see what Abraham is doing here with the Lord. He's pleading for his loved ones. He's interceding for Lot, not for the city of Sodom, for, but for his loved ones. And you can see this conversation between the Lord and Abraham continues to go down in increments of five, from 50 righteous people all the way down to 10 righteous people. And the Lord says at the very end in verse 23 or 32, it says, he, the Lord answered, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. 
When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left and Abraham returned home. The second question that I think that, that we need to ask here this morning is who are you praying for? We, as children of God, are absolutely called, equipped, and sent out to be prayer warriors. One of the greatest things that we can do as children of God is to speak to him about things. We have been called to be prayer warriors. Did you know that we can have conversations with the Lord like we just read between Abraham and the Lord? We can talk to God and he can talk to us and it can be a two-way conversation. We have that kind of access. It says in Hebrews 4.16, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's prayer. James 5.16 says, The prayer of the righteous man is a powerful and effective. And in Matthew 5.44 it says, Pray for those who persecute you. And Ephesians 6.18 it says, Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind be alert always and keep on praying for all the saints and in first timothy 2 1 through 6 it says i urge then first of all that petitions prayers intercessions and thanksgiving be made for everyone for kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness this is good And it pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. That man is Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. Amen? I literally just listed out a, a list of things that we can pray. And guess what? It covers everything. We need to be in prayer at all times for all things, for the saints, for the lost, for our leaders, for the authorities, for our church leaders, for for our missionaries. We need to be praying for the lost people that God has put in our lives to reach with the good news of the gospel. We are called to be prayer warriors. So who are you going to the throne of grace for today? We all know someone who needs the good news of Jesus. We all know someone who needs a healing touch from the Lord. We all know someone who needs the Lord's provision or his rescue or his redemption or his deliverance. Maybe it's you. Can I tell you this? You have the ability to pray for yourself. Scripture says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Man, you have the ability to pray for yourself, but you've been called to be praying. Who, who are you praying for? And so the Lord searched Sodom for 10, for 10 righteous, and there was not even 10. So we find ourselves in the beginning of chapter 19 here. Starting on verse 1, it says, The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. Just really quick, notice the difference between chapter 13, where we see Lot, and chapter 19. In chapter 13, it says that he pitched his tent near Sodom. And in chapter 19, we find him inside the gateway of Sodom. Man, where... Where you set up camp, that shows the power of influence around you. And Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered, we will spend the night in this square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and and they ate. And when they finished eating, 
all the men in the town, both young and old, came to Lot's door with absolutely wicked plans. With absolute evil hearts, they came to Lot's door with the worst of intentions. And so Lot steps outside of his house to try and reason with the wicked people that are in his town at his door. He steps out and tries reasoning with them. Man, how often have we tried to reason with the sin in our life? How often have we tried to reason with the wickedness that's around us, trying to justify it in some way or the other? So Lot finds himself in danger at the hands of the wicked. And in verse 10 we see, but the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back in the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness, so that they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, do you have anyone else here, sons-in-laws, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot spoke with his sons-in-laws who were pledged to marry his daughters. They thought he was kidding. They thought that he was joking around. They would have been the two that added to the ten. They would have been the two that added to the ten. So the angel urged Lot, to grab his wife and his daughters and to get out of town before they destroyed it. In verse 16, the first three words of that verse kind of baffle me a little bit, but I can relate with them so much. When he hesitated, when Lot hesitated, the men grasped his hand in the hands of his wife and of his two daughters and led them to safe led them safely out of the city for the lord was merciful to them man how often have i been surrounded by my sin how often have i been surrounded by the wickedness in my life and i hesitate Has deliverance been offered to you and you hesitated? Has freedom and forgiveness been offered to you and you hesitated? Man, I have. But I love this verse, guys. Because the Lord, being faithful to the prayers of Abraham, bringing back the point of who are you praying for. This is why it's important for us to be a praying people because the Lord is faithful to the prayers of his people. He grasps his hand and led his family to safety for the Lord was merciful to them. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a merciful God. The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God who's slow to anger, who's abounding in love and faithfulness. For the Lord, your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon you. He will not destroy you. He will not forget the covenant that he's made with you. Because God, in his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ while we were still dead in our sins. Because it's by grace that we have been saved. He's a merciful God. He's a merciful God. So I just want to, I want to invite you this morning That maybe there's been some sin in your life that you've been trying to reason with. Maybe there's been a pattern of sin in your life or some wickedness that's been around you that you've been trying to justify. That you've been hearing, you know, the Lord saying, man, here's deliverance. 
Here's your way out. Here's the key to your shackles. Heck, I'll break you out. I want to invite you to hesitate no longer and to grab the hand of your Savior and let him lead you in the way everlasting, to let him lead you into a life that's free in Christ. Man, you can, you can be, have salvation and still need to be saved from something. I want to invite you, whatever that sin may be, to give it to the Lord. Maybe it is accepting Jesus into your life for the first time. Whatever it may be, the scripture says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I'd like to invite you to pray with me at this time, whether it's for forgiveness, whether it's for salvation whether it's for deliverance or freedom, you can pray right now at this time, a simple prayer of faith. Lord, in the middle of my sin, in the middle of my dark place, you have made rescue available to me. I am finished trying to justify my sin I'm finished trying to reason with the wickedness. And I ask you, Lord, to lead me. Would you come into my heart and make me new again? Would you raise me? Would you save me? Would you rescue me, Lord? I love you, Jesus. It's your name I pray. Amen.